Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Kavya Sama, Love is War, Season 3, Episode number 7, Reaction. Okay, the previous episode. Uh, the previous episode was a little bit serious in a way, uh, in the middle of it, where the actual um, time factor comes into consideration like we're like you know it's, it's always like in you know, all jokes and everything that oh like you know they're kind of trying to say like you know like you know that they like each other but they are not able to do that because of their pride this and that it's all jokes usually but this time we can see that shirgana actually plans on going abroad and uh, this means that he has to take a decision kago doesn't know about that so shirgana is like all right i'm going to either confess within this time or i am no either kago is going to confess or if she doesn't confess within time, I'm going to do that. I'm going to accept my defeat because she, he doesn't want to keep like, you know, things in this way. So like that kind of like, you know, comes into like, you know, us audiences, like we get to know about that. And from there onwards, uh, Kavya, not Kavya, sorry, Shirogane tries to, like, you know, subtly kind of insinuate that, oh, like, you know, like, can we hang out together, this and that. Unfortunately, Kavya, isn't able to understand at the beginning because you know he, she's not accustomed to this so <laughs> she kind of messes up and then they both get awkward and then you know like there's like that type of an atmosphere where both of them are embarrassed but they want to like you know uh, invite each other to hang out and uh, they try to get some external help by like you know by kind of bringing up the whole school festival thing with Chika, uh, you know, like uh, Chika, uh, Eno, and all of them. But unfortunately, by the end of it, everything fails because, yeah, like Chika herself by the end kind of completely says that, oh, Kavya, you don't have to go anywhere. Like, you know, we will do it. And that type of thing happens. So that was a failure. Um, but then again, like in, in the end, we get to see Shiogan tries to find out how, what type of a person Kavya likes, what's her preference. So that's why she, he asks Eno and Chika. Unfortunately, she gets misunderstood by the girls. And uh, <laughs> Shirogane, uh, Ishigami comes and backs him up by the end. Uh, and Kaguya as well. Kaguya's like, oh, president's fine the way he is. And uh, yeah, that was kind of funny. Also, another thing I forgot to mention, we met um, Hayasaka's mother in the previous episode. So that was another like, you know, new thing, a new character, you can say. So yeah, let's get started. Let's see what this episode brings. This is episode number seven of Kaga Sama Love is War, season three. I'll be putting the subtitles on the time I hear. Sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. What's happening? Who's this? This is Miko. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Hmm. So this episode will be Eno centric. I think that was Eno in the beginning. Okay, <laughs> let's see what happens today. Oh my god. Okay. Yo, you know space. 
Okay, culture festival. All right. Because uh, Nico Eno can't love part one. Okay. Okay, so this is Eno related. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, there you go. Damn, what is happening here? <laughs> I'm pretty sure Ishigami is also, but no. Yeah, it's, it, she's related to this, so. <laughs> Bame Koyasu. Uno Dera. In the bloom of youth. What? <laughs> the way they're speaking. <laughs> Teppe Tanaka. Oh no, I feel like he'll be more crazy. He'll be more crazy. I woke up lol for real, it makes no sense, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm pretty... I think they're, they're pretty serious about this already. Yeah, there you go. Oh boy. Hey. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I'm pretty sure she has something. Oh, she's getting nervous. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, she seems pretty pissed. Oh no, there, I think that was her name. Charge Morphin. Yo, what the? Masuru. Monster of Profit. Cannot set up stores for the public. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> ah, Ishigami. You recorded us. Okay. What price setting is while? <laughs> Yo, this guy's pretty. Bad. <laughs> oh lord. Okay. <laughs> Can only use in that type of or serving or uh... oh, but okay. Nico's face. Look at Nico's face. Oh, okay. Damn, you should me. Behind the scenes? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> shine, shine beam. <laughs> oh my god, yo. <laughs> Low level. Okay, how to handle with Oh, she wants that <laughs> She's like, oh my god, that's embarrassing Oh Ah Each Oh Oh 
boy, here we go. Understaffed. Oh my god, she is freaking out. Oh my god. Yeah. Like stage fright. Okay. Oh no, uh, this is going in a bad direction. Oh my god. This is not how you do this. You're making more enemies. Ah. She probably got kicked out. Oh, okay, that's what she did. Oh my god. Documentary. Whoa! Oh, okay. Wow. Okay, so she's succeeding i guess okay so what's the problem like everything's okay so everything's going well okay i was not expecting that okay i really was not expecting that i thought this was going to go in a bad direction hmm Petit Well, it seemed as if you... Okay, okay. All right. Let your burn... What a great slogan. All right. Okay, then ended in a very good. Oh. Wait. Wait, the handwriting. Just a sec. Mass media. Okay. Oh. What the? <laughs> Wait. Oh, okay, that's why. Phantom member. <laughs> oh, what's up with the. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh okay <laughs> she's having a nosebleed Oh. Oh, what's, what happened? Oh, yo, these guys are too dramatic. Um. <laughs> what is happening here? Twenty-fourth <laughs> uh, to twenty. Oh, is oh that's why. Oh my god. <laughs> Might. Might. You know. First year of middle. 
Oh! Look at that! Elegant! <laughs> oh wow, that's um... <laughs> oh. Wow, these people are talented. What, what the? <laughs> Give some honest opinion about stuff. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, they're, they're third years. Potion Legend. Oh, okay. About someone who gave his heart to the beloved. Okay, who's this? Momo Ryuju. The astronaut. <laughs> Yuju Gumi Wait, is she like Yakuza or something? Yeah, okay, okay <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Huh? Who's that? Ah, okay, okay <laughs> oh, is this the prank? What? Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> samurai. <laughs> <Not> samurai. <laughs> oh. He, I think he probably plans to confess or something, or maybe. What the? Oh my god, what is this? They're foreshadowing something. Wait, what? <laughs> oh, okay, they're based. Okay, they're narrating this. Alright, I thought they're foreshadowing something. <laughs> what? Is this a tabletop? Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, what's happening? Eating goods, what the? <laughs> Battle Royale! <laughs> Rejected! Oh wow. <laughs> okay, what is this now? Okay, what is that? Balloon? Yugi Shogun wants to blow it up. Oh! Oh! Oh, shit, I got it. <laughs> Chica's face. Oh, he wants to make it hard. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, 
Oh, what the? Okay, they can do it pretty well. Hmm. What is happening? This. Oh my god. <laughs> oh no. The chica will be like, all right, I have to teach him. I have to teach him. I'm his mother. <laughs> Eyeball stickers. Oh my god, chica. Oh no, chica's gonna slap her or something, I feel like. <laughs> oh no, oh my god, Chica, calm down. Hmm. <laughs> oh. Damn. What is happening? It's excessive drama filled atmosphere. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, she's suing. What? Ah, uh, oh. Okay, that's an interesting. Interesting theme. <laughs> Get bloody. It's not a joke. <laughs> yep. Damn, what, what's happened? Okay. One form of torture. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Iron Maiden. How many balloons did he bring? Like, how many does he have? Can Kaguya do it? So, can she teach him? But he's still doing it, you know. He still kept the top position. Wait, what? Her face. <laughs> ah, sparkling. Puzzles me. Oh. Hard work forces me. Several times fatal. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'll definitely. <laughs> what happened? Oh, is that why? Okay, okay. So that's why it was popping so easily. Oh, he deliberately... Okay. Wow. Alright. I think he, he can probably do it now. Yeah, I'm your mom, you know. <laughs> oh, 
Oh my god, yo! <laughs> I really thought you would be able to do it this time. <laughs> um, okay, that was a twist I was not expecting. <laughs> okay, this... Wow, okay, wow. I, I should have seen that coming, but I, I was... I, I didn't actually. I thought he will be able to do it. <laughs> you know, especially after that whole build up of Kaguya's like, oh, nothing, no, like, you know, effort is, um, you know, like, unrewarded. And after all that build up and everything, I'm like, all right, finally he'll be able to do it. But no, obviously, who am I? Like, I'm not kidding. This is Shiro anime we're talking about. <laughs> oh. But, but we did see, like, you know, after a lot of practice, he can do everything so well. For example, as we saw, he studies so much, and that's how he's able to keep that top position, even beating Kaguya all the time. Um, at the same time, for his rapping, we also saw he sucks so bad, but after, you know, like, giving that effort, he, he raps so well. So, he's basically that type of a person who's... Like, you know, who needs to work a bit, a lot harder than others. But if he's able to do that, he can reach a, like, in a position where no one will be able to beat him. Like, something like that. I, I think that's it. I think you call them, like, um, genius of hard work or something. Yeah, I think that's, like, the appropriate um, term to refer to Shirokan. A genius of hard work. He's not a like, you know, genius as for he's not naturally talented of, of, for a lot of things, but you know, he can work hard and uh, he's genius in that department. So, yeah, all right. So, we start this episode with um, Eno having a little flashback. Now, here's the thing I don't know where, how, like, you know, she was getting that, like. In the flashback, he was saying like there was a bonfire, a campfire. People were just, you know, like <laughs> surrounding it. Probably like a, a an uh, what do you call it? Like a cultural festival. And uh, Eno was in there, so I don't know from where this flashback is. Probably something from her past. But then this is something from her past. No, where where did this happen? That's the question. Anyways, I'm sure I'll like you know time will tell. Like they'll give us our answers. Maybe in a upcoming future, you know, backstory episode or something. So we begin with um, Ishigami and uh, Ino being appointed as the um, the committee members. I think that's what they called it. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> No, the, uh, the member, uh, like, you know, like, uh, not committee members, sorry, but they are in charge of, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, of, of the, the, the cheerleading club, or, yeah, yeah, that thing. So, anyways, so here, they <coughs> get in, and they can see, obviously, Subame, as we know, like, you know, she's usually, like, you know, a bit uh, excited about a lot of things. And she's very positive, very um, easily excitable, and she's just hyping everyone up. And Ishigami also, like you know, did that Ishigami also kind of joins in. Um, at first, I was like, oh, because he, he likes her, that's why. But then I realized that like, no, he's also accustomed to this because he himself spent, like you know, like the whole uh, uh, season two where he spent time with them. He was also a part of their group, so he also has that type of a thing of getting easily excited so that's how why like you know like he kind of joined in anyways uh but Ni Nico is obviously um new here so she, and and uh, like you know her, she has a lot of problems like you know like a lot of social uh, anxiety like you know a problem to uh, socially interact and everything so she is very out of place here <laughs> so first of all we get to see them like you know they start talking about what to do? Any suggestion? 
the first was the slogan and they kind of talk about like you know like they give ideas about the slogan and oh there are like oh my god those slogans were <laughs> crazy ono there gives like a suggestion of in the bloom of youth our powers are mad dope shuchin will blow you away <laughs> so she like uh, that um you know that uh what do you call them uh, like uh, the the character archetype of like you know you, uh, a, a gal i think that type of character ar archetype like the way uh she talks and everything that's like that way and uh, I, I don't know if that's that is like you know has like an actual character archetype or a name of it but we've been seeing this kind of coming up a lot for example in uh like in the previous season uh kitagawa marin was that type of character ar archetype you know the way she talks and everything like a gal so i don't know if that has like any name or people just like i don't i don't that still i don't think that actually has a name this character archetype maybe in the future if this gets more popular this will also have like a character archetype or like it'll become an anime trope you know where there'll be characters like this for example we always have our sundres our yandres and our like you know our kudres uh maybe this will also become a character archetype i i love this character archetype you know this the way they talk and everything and uh, like you know marine is like one of the biggest examples if we, as we can see now so <clears throat> yeah anyways um enough about <laughs> enough about that um <clears throat> So then there's a few others who gives a few other slogans and all. Um, <laughs> there's that one glasses guy who's, who gives a more crazier, uh, like, you know, slogan. I woke up, lol, for real. It makes no sense at all, but it's totally amazing, lol. <laughs> Why don't we party like this? No tomorrow at the Shujin festival. This, a million times this. Never have I ever been popular, otaku. Gotta catch some Z's now. Good night. Wow. Okay. That's crazy. <laughs> and Subama is also like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> now, <clears throat> here one thing, one thing is interesting here. As far as I could see from uh, this uh, section, it seemed, seemed as if Onodara was a little bit pissed off at Eno. I don't know what that was. Uh, but Jakanish was kind of talking in a, in a weird way with her. And uh, like, I really thought that she had a problem with her. But in the end, we kind of see that she is pretty chill with her. And that kind of threw me off a little bit. I, I was like, okay, like I thought they were going to like, you know, like have like a passive aggressive relationship or something, like, you know, but then they're like, like good friends in the end. And I'm like, all right, I, I remember, I remember seeing this girl before in, in, in season two as well, this Onodera girl. I think she also interacted with Ishigami. Yeah. But it was like a very small scene, so I don't remember that much. But we can see her personality here. So she's 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 probably at that moment she was probably like, <clears throat> yeah. I think like you know her problem here was that Eno has like you know a lot of things Eno has, which I myself kind of think is a little bit um and like you know in the too extreme. For example, where she tries to like you know like talk about like justice and everything, like not everything you can put into like you know like like a black and white situation i feel like and you know kind of takes everything in, in into the each extreme you know so there are certain sections when i also kind of feel like oh that was unneeded but i feel like oh there was also something like that like when you know was talking about oh this is like you know this cannot happen like you know that we should do this properly and everything she probably got a little bit uh mad she was like oh like you know like she probably got a little bit annoyed at her and uh, as far as i could understand you know the section in the end where Eno kind of says that oh we're going to do this we're going to go to this place we're going to get permission here we're going to go there we're going to get permission there at that moment as well another was not having it but i feel like what made her change was that she saw Eno actually doing everything that she told like she actually like whatever she said she actually made it come true so i think that's what made her change in the end onodera like i, I feel like onodera probably thought that oh this girl she's just talking big you know she won't do anything she's just going to talk big like you know act as if like oh i'm the better person here and in the end when it's time to do the job she'll not do anything or something like that i think she probably thought you know was someone like that 
So that's why she probably had a problem with her in the beginning. But in the end, when she actually sees that, you know, actually does everything what she tells, she probably got like a newfound respect for her or something. And she was like, all right, this, this girl is cool. I think it, it, that's how it went. I might be wrong, but that's the most probable explanation I can get. Because in the beginning, she genuinely was pissed with Eno. I, I saw that. Like, you know, she, was, she was not having it when she, Eno was talking about like, you know, all the uh, things about, oh, taking permission, this and that. So anyways, um, <clears throat> okay, let's talk about that. Uh, that. Um, so <clears throat> like they're putting out like, you know, suggestion and everything. Then there was this, this like, you know, rivalry between the boys and Ishigami. <laughs> Where each, each of the boys were kind of like you know, suggesting something and Ishigami was like, oh, like, you know, that's nonsense. You know, you can do this in this way. <laughs> and like, you know, rejecting every proposal of the, the glasses, like, you know, guys. Um, so... And then there was that little section when he came in just kind of like, you know, there was like moving forward and like all the other three of them were getting like, you know, mad at him. <laughs> that over dramatic section. <laughs> oh, that was funny. You know, everyone was trying to make a good impression on Baki. <clears throat> okay, now next comes up the firework uh, not fireworks sorry um the the uh, the, the camp uh, the campfire the campfire thing that's when Eno gets excited Eno's like oh let's do this because you know we got of got to see a flashback before so but subaki is like wait a minute is her name subaki or is it subame oh my god i always mix them up okay this is going to bother me now <laughs> just a sec Subaki or Subame? Um, Subaki, no. No, is it Subame? Then? Let me check. Subame, okay, Subame, not Subaki. Ah, Me, okay, Subame. Subame. I always mix these two up Subaki, Subame, and Subasa. Like, you know, these three names. I always mix them up. <clears throat> Alright, so Subame. It's like, oh, like, we cannot have, uh, like, you know, a, a campfire because, um, you know, like, the, because of the fires and everything, they're not allowing it. The neighborhood association won't permit it. <clears throat> and here, like, here we can see, we can see, oh, no, there is a problem with Eno. You know, it's like, oh, but if we make, all make an effort, like, you know, this thing, all make an effort. Like, here we can see, oh, there gets pissed. Oh, there is, like... You can go ahead and sprout your ideals, but the fact is we are understaffed. Like, okay, yeah, I, I can pr see it now. Like, you know, so basically, as I just like I said before, she was probably thinking that Eno was a per type of person who's just giving these type of grand old speeches of like, oh, we all can do this. But when time comes, like she won't do anything. She thought it was going to go in that direction. So that's why she was probably pissed off at Eno. But then when she saw in the end that Eno you know, actually did what he told, you know, she herself did it personally, she, she probably got a respect for her. Like this, this whole episode really reminded me of um, Oregairu, you know, the, my team romantic comedy snafu. Uh, one of the best shows I've ever watched, one of the best, I, I put like Oregairu in one of the top sh 10 shows, animes that I've watched. I love it so much. You know, like in Oregairu, there was like a similar section like this, you know, where there was like all sitting down. But the situation there was completely opposite to what was happening here, where people were just spouting nonsense of, oh, we can do this, we can do that, blah, blah, blah. But by the end of it, none of the work was happening. And all the work was kind of falling on the main characters. You know, they were like doing the majority of the things and all the other characters were just talking about oh this will look cool this is this is really amazing like you know using big big terms you know to uh, talk about the situation and in the end they're doing nothing that was the whole situation i was really thinking like you know like this this was also going kind of going in that direction but Eno was here so like you know and we we know how Eno is you know is like, you know, uh, whatever she says, she kind of do, does it. She's not all talk. So I'm guessing Onodara also thought it was going to go in that direction. That's why she was not happy with Eno's, you know, um, input. So, and like, Eno herself has her problem, her own stage fright. She just gets, like, you know, shaky in front of the, like, an amount of, this amount of people. Like, Ishigami realized that. Ishigami is like, oh, you still have that problem, don't you? But 
like you know you know you know still kind of you cannot know, just like you know gives an outburst and she's like no you don't have to help me i can do this on my own and she's like oh we can like i, I know that the regulations are strict the neighborhood association is reluctant but we can do this this and that the disciplinary committee's job is to seize trust from the grown-ups and she was giving all of these speeches and everything and i was really worried that this was going to go in a really bad direction you know because most people you know, like Eno is actually like a newcomer here you know like she she came from outside ishikam is part of this group if you like you know from season two we, we know that ishikam is actually part of this group in a way so if ishikam said something like that it wouldn't matter that much but i was kind of worried about the fact that you know just came from outside as an outsider and she started like you know like just dumping her ideals in front of all these people i was thinking they won't have it you know I was really worried that it was going to go in that direction because she like you know just said so many things that she was either going to get kicked off or nobody's going to listen to her and her like you know it'll be a big mess I thought that was going in that direction but turns out everything went well which I was very surprised with like I was surprised with the fact that all of them actually gave her a chance to show what she's capable of but I guess all these people are good people, you know, like uh, not only Subame, but oh, there are all of them, you know, that their whole group are a bunch of good people. Like if it was like, like, you know, people who just talk big and everything, it would be a different situation. They would probably never give, you know, a chance to actually show that, yeah, she could actually convince the neighborhood association and they would just like, you know, dismiss her, probably kick her out. But these people are good people. And uh, that's why they they were like, all right, let's let's see what she can do. And not only she, they didn't like you know put everything on her shoulders. They even accompanied her. You know, so we can see in the after that like you know where Eno goes and you know, to ask for permission from the neighborhood association. Subame, uh, Subame was there. Omodera was there. Ishigami was there. And you know they they kind of followed her around. And uh, yeah, that gave Eno an op opportunity to show that yeah. We can do this, and since Eno is already always like you know helps people like you know does good things, the neighborhood association was like, oh like you know it, it's okay fine like you know we see her doing these kind of things I think we can allow it, and then there was that <laughs> section of the idol of all grandpas and grandmas everyone's granddaughter, <laughs> Nico Eno, <laughs> all the all the elderly people are just like you know feeding her <laughs> in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> but I think those are rice crackers, yeah, rice crackers and everything. <laughs> so yeah, which shows that she has a really good reputation, and that's why she was able to convince them. And uh, yeah, and then even the principal gave approval. Like obviously, the principal doesn't have anything to say if everyone else gives the approval. Principal was also like, yeah, go ahead. So we are going to have the campfire. And. Uh, yeah. And after that, we see Onodera and Miko you know, walking and coming back. And here, Miko is like, oh, "Wait, I thought you don't like me. So, like, you know, I thought you you're like, you know, like you don't you wouldn't want this. Like, you know, why are you helping me?" So here, Onodera is like, "Yeah, like, and I, like, you know, I I also like would love a campfire. So, I'm I'm not like, you know, I'm not." someone who would say like no that's why i'm helping you and uh, yes here we can see that her expression ono there's expression has changed so much basically she didn't know she didn't know what type of a person you know was that's why she was skeptical about her but after she saw, saw this she was like all right she's a good person and that's why she she became a lot mellower and uh, yeah that's how it went i think Anyways, um, so yeah, Hoshin Festival, uh, the slogan, <laughs> let your burning love reach everyone. <laughs> ah. And yeah, you know one. Now, one thing I really wasn't able to understand this, there's that section after that, like where Ishigami reads a letter where it's written, I'd like to have a campfire. And she's, he's like, this handwriting looks familiar. What was that? Like, th this part kind of confused me a little bit. I don't know. I have no idea when this happened. But de definitely, we can. Like, I'm, I'm sure we all can agree that that's Miko's handwriting. 
but when did that happen or did that happen after that or something i don't know um anyways that's the one part that kind of confused me about this anyways um i, I probably forgot my memory is bad you know like i i just forget stuff <laughs> everything that i watch i just forget <laughs> oh. anyways um okay so now we get to see the mass media club this two people here erika kose and uh, karen kino erika and karen i don't know if i'll be able to remember their name karen is an easy name to remember erika is also easy but okay anyways i uh, will see now we can see that all the new characters that we saw in the opening are here actually you know we i think we saw every each and every one of them and they are i think like side characters probably like you know very side characters and we were just going to see them once or twice uh, but the mass media group things i think they're they're pretty important as far as i can remember there's like a manga on them these two girls were I, I th yeah i think so where they like you know like in the manga all they do is talk about kaguya i think yeah i think there's like a spin-off manga like where these two girls are like the main characters i think they kind of talk about kaguya that's all they do <laughs> so yeah anyways um so these two <laughs> they're kaguya basic kaguya worshippers you know and they're just like you know like like weird heart like you know like hearts are like popping up from here and there like the special effects <laughs> So they go to Kaguya in the archery club and they're like, all right, uh, like, you know, we, I, we want to have a little interview with you. And um, they, they, they talk to Kaguya about, um, you know, the archery club and everything. And Kaguya says like, oh, like, you know, like I'm, I just got here in a, no, wait a minute. What is that? Oh, okay, here we go. Uh, they say like you uh, excel in a lot of things. Um, <laughs> and they start having a breakdown in the middle of that. <laughs> They're so like, you know, just like spinten with Kaguya. And uh, okay, then they're like so, okay so we know that you are like, you know, the ace over here, but you have not entered a single tournament. Why is that? And she's like, oh, there's this stuff, you know, and they start dramatizing the whole thing. They're like, oh, my God, something must happen. It can ha must have happened. Maybe maybe the, she's so good at like, you know, archery that to give us commoners, us worms a chance, you know, she actually herself sacrificed her talent. And she's like, oh, I won't go in these tournaments because if I go, like, you know, like <laughs> all the others won't get a chance to show <laughs> Uh, here we go. Kage forgave all those foolish mortals and departed the world of archery with a smile. <laughs> god damn. But oh my god. In reality, she she doesn't go to tournaments because she thinks if someday Shirogane and she spend time <laughs> on Christmas and Christmas Eve. So you know if that happens, that's why she doesn't go in an archery tournament. It has never happened if but if that happens someday so <laughs> while well, these girls are just thinking of so many things now and then they she talk about how she's so good and she says like oh i just happened to make the ideal shot during my first year of middle school and ever since then i've been firing the same way that's all <laughs> this oh my god um, we can see, you know, the after image of Kage where she was like an like, ice cold, like, you know, very stoic, that type of a personality. We remember in season one, they talked about that part. So I'm guessing she was probably very casually doing it and it just hit as she says. And then she kept doing that. And now she's the ace of the archery club. These girls, they're like, oh my God, that's so amazing. I guess like hitting the targets is merely the result. What type of a oh my god, like this is some cool quotes, you know? <laughs> and then they just fall down. Ah, <laughs> oh, that was funny. 
All right, they go to Suba, Subame after that, and obviously they're also fangirling over Subame because Subame is also a very talented, very you know, pretty individual. So they're like, oh my God, Subame, like, you know, like, <laughs> we want to have an interview and talk about like, you know, everything, like, you know, all the, I think she's like in the gymnastics, yeah. And uh, Subame talks about how this will be the final year for them because they'll be obviously graduating. And uh, she shows some moves, and uh, okay, what kind, what they'll be doing is I think okay. They ask what kind of story will you be telling? Our play is about the Hoshin legend. It's Hoshin festival's origin story, a love story about someone who gave his heart to his beloved interesting so this is like an origin story like like a like a thing which actually was like in the legends and all the first hoshin festival so maybe we get to know that what it was later on all right then we meet this this other girl from the astronomy club momo ryuju and she's from the yakuza her family's from the yakuza and she kind of is an eccentric as we can see she says that oh like why are you looking at me at night i'm not going to kill you but then she says i'm going to kill you <laughs> It's funny to see. And then she's like, alright, like you know, you, you can talk to Shirogane over there, like you know, he 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 will answer all your questions and Shirogane they start uh, you know like uh, obviously they're also very big fans of Shirogane as well. He's so noble that I've sustained damage in my semicircular canals. Wow. Okay, so interesting thing here. Shirogane is painting a, like a like a dragon and a ball in it. So he says that it's a prank traditionally played by the student council. Prank. Several decades ago, the student council installed a giant ball on a roof. Since then, we have always used guerrilla tactics to place a paper mache gemstone like ball here. Okay, so that's what they do. I s okay. It's like it's like a prank, not a prank, but like a joke kind of thing. <laughs> Shirogane is like, oh, I'm good at this because I uh, like and I did it before. The girls are like, oh, she's there. She's a he's the samurai, the last samurai. <laughs> and Shirogane here acts cool and talks about how they're going to make this, like you know, uh, a success. And these girls start narrating a weird story. I don't know what the hell that story was. I really, for a moment, I really thought they were foreshadowing the whole show or something. But they were just narrating a story. <laughs> a chain of betrayals as everyone loses sight of love. Kaguya Shinonyoi has a gentle smile on her face. I really was thinking, you know, that they were actually narrating the fo or foreshadowing the, the story, how this is going to go, the manga, the anime is going to go. You know, they kind of do it, like, you know, I've seen a lot of animals do it. Suddenly they start foreshadowing, like, you know, in the middle of a battle, say, they start foreshadowing what's going to happen in the near future. They're like, oh, this one thing that this person did is going to make a big change in the universe or whatever. Like, you know, they kind of foreshadow it like this. I really thought it was something like that. No, it was not. <laughs> and it's like, to be continued in the next episode of Dark Legend of Shu Chin <laughs> oh god then they go to the the board game club and they're talking about like you know like some battle royale like i don't know if that was a pubg reference or whatever you know like they're like talking about car 98 and the like you know the helmets and everything i think it was like a pubg reference most probably i uh, you know what i think most probably when like you know this is a manga this came out a long ago when this probably came out this a chapter of the manga I think it was probably the time when PUBG was very popular worldwide. I, I guess that's what they, why they like, you know, kind of referenced it. More, most probably. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, yeah, this is definitely a PUBG reference. They even talk about battle royale. So yeah, they're like, oh, we're going to have a battle royale, and like, you know, like they're all just crazy. But it was like, you know, rejected. All right, the next part where we can see Shirogane is trying to make balloons and like kind of make them in a heart shape. 
um this one thing like you know it's quite difficult definitely like you know like you have to twist the balloons and everything she kind of just popping everything and wow my god this part was so funny we can see like you know chica is like oh again he has started this you know like like don't look at me like that i won't be able to help you this time all like because all the time i try to help you it all ends up in the same way and she's just like i yeah, am not having this this time i won't help him out <laughs> kashibagi is also there <laughs> and we see these two guys you know shogun and his friend they come in and they're like the, the the villain of this whole thing they're like oh shirogane what are you doing you know oh you still cannot do it aha uh -huh. look at my like you know things that i i was able to do and they go away <laughs> chika's just listening to it you know she she she's listening to it and she's she still doesn't want to help but she she she's like ah oh. like <laughs> Kashiwagi goes and Kashiwagi is like, all right, like you know, president, you know, if you can't do it, you don't have to do it. You can do something else. You can that's that way you can help us out. You know, she's like, yeah, like you know, and she she goes to Chika. She's like, oh, like you know, Chika, I did it. Chika's like, how could you say something that would destroy a child's potential? And I'm like, yeah, this is definitely Chika in her mom mode. <laughs> I we've seen multiple times Chika treats <laughs> Shirogane like <laughs> like his son. and she's like she's like we have to actually let him like you know learn the hard way you just destroyed his potential and she's like i i don't want to help him out but i also cannot like you know leave him alone like she's like just freaking out you're going to stand up shogun's like don't worry chika all the time all the time i have been alone this time as well i'll try to find it find a way on my own <laughs> chika's just freaking out chika's like oh i want to help him so much you know, he, he's like my child <laughs> how can i be um, be a mo mother and can't help my child out in times of his need <laughs> oh god and shirogane goes to like another you know, pet school student council president uh, the president like, like room student council room and she kaguya's there kaguya is like you know kind of suing like cosplay cafe that's what they're going to have and uh, shirogane it's like, oh, like, can I do it here? Because I might, I might annoy you, you know, because I cannot do this. If everything five times pops. And uh, Kaga's like, it's okay, President, you can do it. Oh, boy. She's going to face multiple, like, and all the time, and she's, he's not able to do it. And in the end, she's going to like, ah, I'm, I'm trash. I, I cannot. Like, why am I like this? all the time i try so hard and we can see how like you know like we we see, know this before as well like and he's like you know he actually to eat the top position he he studies a lot like you know he's a hard worker and he says how he always needs so much more effort than others and kagya is like okay so i i can see where like you know this is a, such a nice thing that kagya says i've wondered where your ready wit comes from um hard work fosters memory observation skills and reason and so once you grasp a new skill your mind learns to expand several times faster than others all of the hard work you have put in until now it has made you who you are hmm how lovely that again you know, it's such a nice way to encourage someone like this is basically what she's saying you're a genius of hard work like there's like you know there's a difference there's, there's people who are like you know with inborn talents they're genius from the birth you know like they have like these type of talents where they're so great and which makes them so superior to everyone in like you know uh in ways of their skills and everything but there are people who do is able to bring the same thing into fruition by just working hard if you don't have talent and you can work hard then that in itself is a talent like working hard in itself is a talent so that's basically what Kaguya said here. Yeah. So yeah, Shirogane is like, all right, like, I'll try. And here we see that Chika's like, my God, the whole buildup was crazy, and the way this ended. Um, Chika's like, oh, President, like you know, you are actually like you know, using these like you know, old balloons. Here you go, new balloons. You don't have to like you know, you know, save money. And Shirogane is like, all right. All right, and I'm like, wow, finally, Shogane will be able to make balloons properly. 
And Chica's like, ah, like, you know, there you go. You know, finally, my son, he'll be able to do it properly now. And oh boy, how wrong she was. Shirogane still cannot do it. <laughs> and Chica's like, why? And she just falls down. And I'm like, wow, like, you know, all that build up for this. Like, what the hell? <laughs> so yeah, that was hilarious. Really good episode. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. This was my reaction to Kaguya-sama Love is War Season 3, episode number 7. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, or you haven't subscribed, comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next week with another episode of Kaguya-sama Love is War. Until then, goodbye and have a nice day.